Sometimes ignorance is not bliss. Now, whether we have ourselves been victim of abuse or not, the ripple effects of childhood abuse is so strong that directly or indirectly, at some point, we will get impacted. So if you want to learn the shocking effects of childhood trauma on adulthood, keep watching. Hi, welcome to Live to the Fullest. Let's address the elephant in the room. Most of the challenges that we see in the society today can be almost always traced back to some degree of childhood abuse or childhood trauma. That is why the term healing the child within or the inner child, because if the child is wounded, the body, the physical body may have chronologically grown up and we have become adults, but the child inside is still crying. The victim inside is still crying and howling with pain. Sometimes we think that if it's childhood abuse, you know, it has happened in childhood and time is the best healer as time goes by, you know, the person forgets and everything is okay. It's actually exactly the opposite. If the feelings or that stress, that past has gone unresolved, it, it's like a simmering volcano. So you had the volcano and then it lies dormant during, you know, the teen years and then it explodes in adulthood when there, there's the pressures of life, you know, responsibility and social connections and relationships. What we also have to remember that at Live to the Fullest, I know that we are talking about a very serious topic and a grim topic. We're talking about the long-term effects of childhood abuse. But the goal of Live to the Fullest is to talk about this serious topic with positivity and zinc and with hope for healing and recovery. Because healing of abuse or trauma does not mean that we have to erase the past or that we will have to somehow uh, fix the past. Healing involves embracing the past, embracing the negative memories, healing some of it and embracing some of it and eventually managing our trauma. So keep that in mind. With that, let's dive in. Effect number one, poor regulation skills. Now, regulation skills is a little bit more technical word. Let's use a simplified term, shock absorbers. Most of us have some level of shock absorbers. Some of us have really good shock absorbers. And by that, I mean that when you're faced with a challenging situation, your response is determined by how good uh, is your ability to process the obstacle that's in front of you and then respond appropriately. Now, sometimes we react and sometimes we respond. But uh, just like cars and bikes, uh, our internal system also has some shock absorbers. What happens when somebody goes through abuse or trauma, they did not get the natural environment, the natural learning environment or the normal uh, learning pattern for their brain. So they develop poor shock absorbers. So they get overwhelmed easily in adulthood. You know, when there are pressures, uh, they can be job situations, they can be social situations, they get overwhelmed very easily. Effect number two. So poor regulation skills often leads to uh, the coping mechanism of disassociating. So most of the times when folks get overwhelmed because their shock absorbers are not good, they didn't get a chance to build it up in their childhood, uh, they tend to disassociate from reality. So they want to run away because the reality is so painful, the pressure is just too much and they do not have the capacity to handle it. Uh, they disassociate or they withdraw or there is isolation. We want to minimize the reality. We want to rationalize it. We want to justify it. We sometimes want to spiritualize it. Uh, and it's just a coping mechanism of trying to disassociate and trying to stay disconnected. Sometimes in extreme situation, it can also be uh, suicide attempts or suicide, uh, suicidal tendencies because you want to withdraw from life completely. It's a coping mechanism but it's a coping mechanism of running away because of the lack of ability to regulate uh, emotions and stress. Number three, poor mental health. A person who has gone through abuse or trauma in adulthood would eventually, is very likely to suffer from anxiety, from depression, from PTSD, 
uh, from behavioral disorders or psychological disorders, personality disorders. Now, a quick disclaimer here. Just because someone has depression or has PTSD, that does not necessarily mean that they were abused in childhood. And similarly, if someone has been abused in childhood, that does not necessarily mean that they will suffer from psychological disorders or, or any kind of mental disorder. Uh, and, and by mental disorder, we don't mean it in a negative or a demeaning way at all. Uh, it, it's, it's about protecting your mental health because it is as important as physical health. But I do want to make sure that this is very clear that, you know, there are so many factors. Life is not black and white. It's, it's, it's much more complex. There's so many factors into play. But the chances, the likelihood of suffering from disorders or anxiety or panic attacks increases if there has been childhood trauma that has gone unresolved into adulthood. In fact, on my website, livetothefullest.net, I do offer a free uh, ebook that lists positive affirmations that can be used in order to heal this anxiety because the only way that you can heal uh, anxiety is to tell your body about your mind about certainty that hey everything is okay everything is all right no need to stress out no need to worry of course we use the right words and affirmations but log on to my website and you can grab that ebook which lists all those affirmations there's an interesting snippet here for you that our our brains has something called as the emotional brain or the emotional center of the brain the limbic system and that plays a massive role in in very very important role in our our emotional stability in our ability to to process situations from emotional perspective and our memories it is called as the emotional center of the brain now, in trauma or abuse, what happens is that our emotional brain registers very high levels of stress. And it's, it's, it's the panic center, the amygdala in the limbic system is the panic center of, the, of our emotional brain. So when the amygdala sees constant levels of stress in childhood because of the abuse, it, the, the sense of normal is too high. For, for, for a panic. So it's always hypervigilant because it has seen so much of stress that, that it, it starts thinking that's normal. It's normal to be panicked. It's normal to be hypervigilant, which is not the case under normal conditions. Number four, flashbacks. Child abuse often involves uh, experiences of fear, uh, powerlessness, hopelessness. And sometimes what happens is that when it is very traumatizing, we develop what is what are called as implicit memories or body memories, which means that the emotional intensity of the memory is very high. But because the experience is so traumatizing, the brain also records the, the physical sensation that the person feels during that negative experience. And people have flashbacks even in their 60s and 70s, if they were abused as a child, uh, nightmares and flashbacks happen even at that age because it's unresolved. Nature is not going to let us escape. It's always going to remind us that there is this pain that needs to get resolved. So sometimes abuse survivors have these flashbacks or implicit memories where they feel the actual physical sensation and the emotional sensation uh, exactly the same way like they had it when they had the original experience and that's very unfortunate terrifying actually when you feel the same trembling or the same flushing of uh, the face that happened when the original experience happened effect number five massive hit in self-confidence and self-esteem there is a term called as conditional emotional response to abuse related stimuli which basically means that the survivor, when they see any similar experience or a, or a similar trigger that resonates with them and, and reminds them of their abuse or trauma, it will trigger intense feelings of guilt, grief, shame, or anger. And these are called as emotional storms. So when they face these emotional storms on a daily basis, life becomes too overwhelming. Unfortunately, childhood abuse and trauma are, are they are huge stones pelted at a very young mind. A brain that has not developed to the point that it can process that experience. 
the limbic system going haywire with with all the 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 danger and the fear and the powerlessness that is associated with trauma it definitely impacts the person's belief system person's attitude the thinking pattern and what the definition of the world is for that child that truly changes with abuse and trauma the child inside would be angry with the world because their framework or their definition of world was very different very unsafe because of the experience in childhood if any of the effects resonated with you or if you've seen a loved one suffer from any of these please share your experience in the comment section below if you liked what we discussed today please like the video and subscribe to our channel that's all for today be your best and live to the fullest